So now I want to use the midpoint rule to approximate this integral of natural log of the quantity x cubed plus 2 with limits of integration 4 to 6, and we're going to let n equal 10. And the midpoint rule, let's write that down. This is a very good habit to get into, so we can see how it goes from the general rule over to the spe specific problem. So we have limits of integration a to b of f of x dx e is approximately equal to capital M sub n, um, which is equal to delta x, and then bracket of f of x bar sub 1 plus f of x bar sub 2 plus dot 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 plus f of x bar sub n. And we're going to let delta x equal b minus a over n, and our x bar sub i will be equal to 1 half of x sub i minus 1 plus x sub i. So it's that midpoint of, uh, of our I minus, x sub i minus 1 and x sub i. Uh, but we also, I want to recall a little tidbit of information here that will be helpful to me, is that x sub i is going to be equal to a plus i times delta x. So our delta x would be 6 minus 4 over 10, which is 2 fifths, or 2 tenths, keep doing that, equals 1 fifth. Now this x bar sub i um, is our midpoint, and we've seen this back when we were doing area approximation when we first learned about integrals. Um, uh, using the midpoint formula. So this should be somewhat familiar, but again, I want to focus on this subnotation and how to utilize it. We, I think the intuitive approach we get, but let's make sure we know how to use the formula and all of its notation, because that kind of stuff comes up a lot. Um, so x sub 1, or actually x sub 0, because of our x sub i equals a plus i times delta x, our x sub 0 would be 4 plus 0 times 1 fifth, which is 4, x sub 1 would be 4 plus 1 times that 1 fifth, which would be then, um, before I, I think I was putting it in fractions, let's go ahead and put this in decimals because um, 1 fifth is just 0 0.2, so this would be 4.2, because that way we'll see the midpoint a little bit easier. x sub 2 is equal to 4 plus 2 times that 1 fifth, 1 fifth is uh, 0.2, and so 0.2 times 2 is 0.4, and so that becomes 4.4. And this will go all the way down to x10, which is 4 plus 10 times 1 fifth, which is 6. Okay, so we have all our x's. Now let's find the midpoint. So x bar sub i. Let's find x bar sub 1. That's going to be equal to 1 half times, well, x um, sub i minus 1 is x sub 0 for this iteration because x bar sub 1 so I did 1 minus 1 x sub 0 plus and that would be x sub i would then be x sub 1 utilizing that same i and our x sub 0 we have on the right here was 4 and our x sub 1 was 4.2 so if we were to add this we get 8.2 multiply it by a half or divide by 2 however you want to do it you're going to get 4.1 which makes sense. What's between 4 and 4.2? 4.1. So you don't necessarily have to do all the arithmetic. I think it's, it kind of jumps out at you. x bar sub 2. That would be equal to 1 half of, well, x sub i minus 1 is x sub 2 minus 1. So that's x sub 1 plus, and then the x sub i is x sub 2. So there's no bars on these x's in the parentheses because we're, we're taking the actual x values and the x bars representing the midpoint of those values. So that's equal to 1 half x sub 1 was 4.2 plus x sub 2 over here on the right I'm seeing is 4.4. I think we can see that the midpoint between those would be 4.3, but you can use your calculator and verify that for yourself. And so we go all the way down to it wants x sub bar x bar sub n, which in our case n is 10, so I'm going to calculate all the way down to x bar sub 10. That means using my little formula, it's 1 half times x sub 9 plus x sub 10, 
which is one half my x sub nine. Um, I don't have it up there, but it would be 5.8. And my x sub 10 was six. And so we can see that midpoint would be 5.9. So I got all my x values figured out. And um, again, a lot of uh, work out there will just show the 4.1, 4.3, and we can see that intuitively. Again, the, a lot of practice needs to come in utilizing these subnotations. So it's good to get familiar with that. Using our midpoint rule, so m sub 10 is going to be equal to, it's just delta x, so 1 fifth times the brackets of f of 4.1, because that's our x bar sub 1. Let's double check, make sure I wrote it down yet. Yep, there, it's my x bar sub 1. So there's a 4.1 plus f of 4.3 plus, and I'm going to just do dot, 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 all the way to my f of 6. And so it's going to take all those midpoints. And um, if I put this into what f actually is, so it's 1 fifth times the bracket, or and bracket natural log of 4.1 cubed plus 2, plus natural log of 4.3 cubed plus 2, plus all the way down to natural log of 6 cubed plus 2. And notice the difference between the other rules where there's coefficients, these have no coefficients. And I'm going to, again, do my calculations in Google Sheets. Um, what I have noticed, so I've used calculators to calculate these before, and then you get all these decimals, all these decimals, especially if you have n equals 10, it is very excessive. I make errors. <laughs> I do. I don't write my decimals down uh, the right way. I, I mess up something. I transpose numbers. So as long as you've shown all this setup, for me, again, that shows a lot of understanding into the actual rule itself and then the actual just uh, computation here. Uh, the natural log, you could utilize any kind of calculator or anything. So I'm going to jump to my Google Sheets. So this is an, a different calculation I was doing earlier. So I'm going to, um, let's see, let's just go to the right here. Okay, so my function, again, I'm just going to write it up top here so I remember what it is, is natural log of x cubed plus 2. And I'm going to set up a column that's just x's, and I will set up an output column of f of x. And I don't need to set up a coefficient column because unlike trapezoidal or Simpson's rule, there's no coefficients. They're all just one. Um, and so these two columns are fine. My limit started at 4. That was my lower limit. And my delta x was 1 fifth. So I'm going to say take that 4, that cell that that 4 is in, add 1 divided by 5 and copy this down till I get to 6. And now my f of x is going to be equal to um, natural log parentheses, and I'm going to go to that cell that that 4 was in, take that to the third power, plus 2, close parentheses, let it autofill. There's all my output values. And now I'm going to sum all of those output values in that column of f of x, and I get some sum. But that, everything right here in the f of x column was what's in the brackets. That's all the outputs. And then the sum of that, I need to now multiply that by my delta x, because that's what was in front of the bracket. So I'm going to take that number and multiply it by the delta x, which was 1 fifth. And I get 10.607168. And then I look at this answer and go, wait a second, I did something wrong. And instead of editing this out of the video, because I just got going and didn't look at my notes, I'm going to leave this in because this is a, an error, actually, I tend to make because I get going too fast. And I'm sure that this might happen to you. So if your answer doesn't come out and you're going like, I did everything right, everything in my formula is correct. Aha, I didn't use my midpoints. So herein lies the issue of jumping between two screens. But all I have to do is change that to a 4.1 because that was my first midpoint value. And then I get the uh, 4.1 is my first value, but notice here the 6.1. It doesn't go past 6.1. My final iteration was at the 5.9. So I'm going to take that last row out. And so in this case, 
unlike trapezoidal rule, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten rows exactly because we started with an x bar sub one in our formula. We did not start with an x sub zero within the actual formula calculation. Okay, so that's why I had to take out that last row. And now looking at my answer, that looks right. And so we're good. So yeah, just watch whatever calculations you're doing. I had um, my old iteration in there. The midpoints, you do gotta remember that you are starting at something other than four. You're starting at that first midpoint. Okay, so I'm gonna take that 9.650912 and put that on my paper. Okay, so I have my answer of 9.650912 and I'm done using the midpoint formula.